let's start. Uh, could you please? It uh, has to be the, very loud. The people at the back, in case you don't hear me, please raise up your hand so I can so shout. Come closer. I should speak louder. Don't repeat. Okay, so I will start to speak louder, but please, please uh, bear with me. <coughs> okay, so let me first introduce uh, the company I uh, came from, so I'm from uh, NES. Our company is uh, uh, working, uh, we are a digital transformation company, working on different products uh, for different clients all over the world. I have more than uh, 4,500 uh, colleagues, I don't know each other. Uh, uh, we are like leveraging our uh, practices when we are working on uh, different projects like cloud uh, engineering practice, sales code practice and more practices. Plus we have a center of excellence, uh, actually I am part uh, of, I will describe later. And uh, also we partner with uh, well-known uh, companies like uh, AWS, Azure, uh, Salesforce, Snowflake and uh, Confluent. And we are trying to leverage uh, all benefits we can get uh, in our implementation. Uh, so we have uh, 11 innovations hubs uh, all over the world, uh, in North America, Europe, uh, Asia. Uh, I came from Slovakia, so it's this uh, middle part of Central Europe. And uh, uh, as you can see, we are all here in Riga uh, right now. Uh, I'm a member of uh, Manufacturing and Transportation Business uh, Unit. Uh, and uh, our like, goal is to group all accounts uh, or projects that belong uh, to these two domains. Uh, I'm a member of Center of Excellence in this uh, business uh, unit and uh, together with my colleagues uh, it's like a dream place to work uh, at uh, because we are exploring new ways how to solve problems. Uh, we are executing POCs, so portion of POCs are done by uh, like, demand from our customers when they don't have enough time to explore a particular area or actually if we have free time or uh, there is no uh, demand for a dedicated POC so we are free to, to pick uh, something interesting to work on and I will describe later one of such example. Based on this sometimes we transfer a POC to some kind of accelerator and this accelerator is then used by our customers to speed up and reduce uh, time to market and also we are connecting our clients, connecting our clients uh, or customers uh, in case one customer is producing uh, one service that another customer is uh, you know, aware about so then we can help them to connect uh, together and uh, propose maybe that uh, connection. So my expertise is uh, mapping and navigation and this was like a really free space so I picked uh, Digital Twin as, as you. Okay, so it's first time for me to be in Riga and it seems somebody did really uh, bad work regarding planning because it seems I'm too soon here. I should be here in three uh, weeks and it will be matched between Slovakia and Latvia. So I have first question that how many of you uh, doesn't care what will be the result of this match? That do okay. or don't? Don't. Okay. okay. How many of you think that Slovakia will win? Very good, good answer. It's not fair. Strange question to ask in Latvia. <laughs> Get him out. <laughs> okay, and uh, how many of you uh, think that uh, Latvia? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ah, okay. Couple of hands. Uh, anyhow, well, let's hope it will be a uh, nice game, uh, many goals, overtime, and then uh, the country that names ends on IA will win. <laughs> okay, so let's start with presentation. So, Digital Twin from uh, IoT to Smart Future. IoT, because the pres uh, previous presentation was uh, regarding IoT and sensing and hard, how to do it in a hard, hard way, but it, it really starts with sensing. So really know what the environment is about, uh, measure uh, some uh, basic parameters of en environment, then connect those parameters together and have something that is more, more useful 
for like the bigger uh, group of entities, let's say. On top of this, we can maybe build even like smart future, as I will describe uh, describe uh, later. Okay, every uh, introduction, digital twin introduction uh, presentation needs to start with uh, definition. So let's do it. So digital twin is a relevant virtual representation of a state and behavior of something physical or non-physical with a functional output in a real world. There are many of um, definitions of uh, digital twin. I picked this one because I think it contains all like traits of a uh, digital uh, twin. And let's break up this uh, definition to small smaller parts. So first is uh, virtual representation of something uh, physical. So we can imagine vehicle, for example, uh, and we would like to build a digital twin of a vehicle so we can decide uh, what parameters we need to expose and they will live somewhere and can be used uh, instead of looking on the vehicle. So one, one uh, example is, or one trait feature of digital twin is that uh, it doesn't matter whether you are looking on a real thing or digital twin, you can read the same information from it. And this is the first uh, maybe benefit on why we are doing this. Uh, the second one, uh, when uh, now when a car is approaching a city, so there are cameras, they scan the license plate and uh, maybe scan databases to get some kind of information uh, and statistics regarding the traffic in the city, for example. But uh, there is no connection. And uh, maybe it will be good in future, for sure, uh, that those smart city and then uh, digital twin of a vehicle can communicate and maybe exchange a couple of information like destination for example is a, a nice example and then smart city can adjust or advise the vehicle that for example what is the best route or smart city has an information that can be shared with uh, fresh information with vehicles so it's for group of both entities uh, here uh, very relevant. So relevant means that uh, many many people think that digital twin needs to be like uh, really copy of, of real things. So really nice 3D representation of the things uh, of the thing uh, to uh, millimeters. But uh, actually it depends on your use case. So if, for example, for this vehicle, it's really the thing you would like to have. It's the uh, you would like to share with others. In smart city is uh, the destination of the vehicle, so then it's enough to have just this one parameter and you can call it digital twin, actually, a bit, uh, but it depends, right? So it's not only 3D representation of, of something uh, real. Then uh, behavior, it's more tricky because behavior is, uh, is something that is not easy to achieve. So to remember or expose the information where the car is uh, heading, it's quite easy, but to uh, to model behavior of this particular car in more detail requires uh, quite extensive uh, modeling uh, capabilities uh, and it's uh, something that is beyond of this uh, great presentation. Uh, okay, and then uh, the last one is uh, functional output in the real world. So it doesn't make sense to build a digital twin in case uh, it's not for a good, right? So there is no some kind of benefit the real world can get from, uh, from uh, this implementation. There is a simpler uh, version of uh, this uh, of all uh, definitions and it's like uh, definition uh, digital twin needs uh, four things uh, physical system, so it's clear then uh, digital representation of the system then connection between those two systems and uh, business outcome. So it's really the same what this first definition said but uh, in other words. And now why Digital Twin is so popular. Uh, last year we visited a conference, IoT conference in Barcelona, 75% of the presentation were about uh, Digital Twins. Everybody is building Digital Twins, even there was one presentation where they were creating Digital Twin for uh, Barcelona Football Club uh, Stadium, Camp de Nou, uh, and they were model like the movement of the visitors through uh, through the stadium uh, during the match day or even model and uh, track uh, how people are buying the tickets uh, then create the segments of the uh, groups of the visitors of the stadium and then they can work with those uh, segments and maybe adjust uh, and get more people uh, to the stadium next time so 
those like their purpose. Uh, okay, why so many digital twins? Uh, because there are enablers uh, that uh, allows us to create digital twins. Because digital twin as a concept is quite uh, old. Uh, the first, uh, the books are saying that uh, first mention of digital twin is actually Apollo uh, mission when there was an issue and uh, they model the part of, uh, of the equipment uh, on the earth and then help them to fix uh, something in, uh, in the ship. <coughs> uh, then uh, uh, later in uh, 2020, uh, 2010 I think, uh, there, are, uh, there is another concept uh, and tools uh, called uh, product uh, lifecycle management tools where digital twin was used actually to, to create a model and then uh, create the better version of the product even before the, the product is uh, created. So it's also called like digital twin. But uh, after a couple of years, we have a lot of sensors everywhere, so we can like sense in houses, uh, everything uh, uh, that, that would be sense. Uh, then IoT platform. So my colleague, uh, after my presentation, will show you a couple of uh, IoT platforms uh, that uh, uh, fill this gap. How to get the data from the sensors uh, to the cloud in this case. Then the amount of data is really big, so we need uh, big data frameworks uh, to process the data. Cloud computing, uh, for sure, enabler, because uh, create infrastructure for such a solution, it's uh, much easier to do nowadays. And machine learning and AI, uh, AI it's really uh, another enabler, because uh, this modeling part and model a behavior, it's easier to do uh, comparing to some kind of physics-based model when you need a domain expert and mathematician to create some kind of formula to uh, model behavior of uh, some, some, some part of the digital twin comparing to use uh, ML AI uh, plus uh, some uh, historical data uh, to figure out uh, what actually behavior should be. Actually, any question? Okay. Uh, okay, so a couple of uh, digital twin uh, use cases. Um, data integration is like maybe not so uh, uh, visible uh, what digital twin can be used for. So data integration uh, in, uh, tries to integrate all data sources for this uh, particular digital twin. So uh, I will speak about this uh, later. Then uh, system integration. So in case uh, somebody wants to share data that belongs to a digital twin or some kind of entity, real world entity, uh, then this inf information can be shared easily in uh, some platform and others can access it. Visualization, as I said, is not so important, but important for people to understand the context uh, better, context of the information. Then uh, another use case is uh, monitoring, uh, get the visibility of what is happening. So sometimes it's really hard to understand what temperature or high temperature means and how it affects other components uh, of uh, some environment. Then predictive analytics uh, as a feature of using uh, historical data. Then past state, uh, having digital twin you can use the model then uh, like uh, reverse time uh, back and uh, debug for example the state with all data sources uh, that are valid for this particular uh, time point uh, to, to figure out uh, why such a situation. Then simulation, this is the hard uh, stuff uh, to, to implement, but there is a saying that uh, if digital twin cannot do a simulation, it's not a digital twin. For today we will pretend that uh, it's not our case. Uh, then verification and validation, so we can validate whether uh, the behavior of a digital twin is uh, or this through digital twin, you can validate whether the behavior of the real thing is uh, still valid and according to some expectation. And then the interoperability, so the way when digital twins uh, talk together and uh, can, can uh, do something for, for our good. Okay, this is true story. Okay, question. Maybe I, I can have one question. So on the previous slide, 
So for now, it, it sounds more like a buzzword, like digital twin, because like we have monitoring, like simulations and, and sensors uh, before before this buzzword appears. So uh, when we clearly can state what is the cr criteria when it's a digital twin, because if we have just a bunch of uh, sensors, like maybe at home, maybe at uh, production factory, so it's just a bunch of sensors. When it becomes digital twin. Okay. Good question. <laughs> thank, thank you. So yeah, uh, the same thing. And as I said, it's a true story. So the same question we were asking uh, ourselves: uh, digital twin. It is only buzzword, and we are looking also into this uh, to help our like clients to understand uh, what is the the state. Because if every software and we are developers, uh, mostly of you, you are working on a software that describes something from real world. So maybe any of your software is actually some kind of uh, digital tool, right? So it's like bank, uh, banking software, bank account also, it means uh, what is the amount of the money I have on, on the account and somehow it relates to reality, uh, vehicle monitoring, for example, and uh, stuff. The benefits are like data integration. So uh, or create something like system of systems uh, where you can plug in all data sources you have then uh, put them together and uh, have a better visibility of the context for best, better decision making. Right? So it's, uh, I would say, like a layer on top of everything uh, we have right now. So, so for example, uh, for a home, if we have like sensors, then at which moment it becomes uh, a digital twin? When it's integrating with other homes? No. Uh, so, okay, Let, let's go back. We have physical system at home. Okay. Okay. Uh, digital representation of the systems. Well, so maybe Oscar can say, but uh, if we have hub, so we have like digital representations of rooms and. Or, or yes. Okay. So there is some kind of data representation. You can ask what is the temperature in the bathroom, right? For example, yeah. something like, like this. Plus, you need to have a, or you need to have access to all data you need for some kind of decision making. Right, so here is already something that maybe like uh, draw the line between the digital twin implementation and something that maybe doesn't have uh, all data that are required because maybe they are sitting in different data sources or something like this. Okay, so this is the first point. Then the connection between them um, means that uh, if something will change in the real world, I would like to see it in the data, smart home, okay, uh, works. And also vice versa, once I will change something in the model or digital twin, it will be propagated back to the, <coughs> to the uh, uh, real thing, smart house, works, right? So this is okay. And the uh, business outcome or uh, like real world outcome, uh, okay. Actually, my question for Oscar is, uh, would be, and um, maybe will be after the presentation, at what level of automation they achieved? So not only like the observe and manipulate or uh, send commands to devices but uh, what is the level of automation that uh, it's like built in, in your smart uh, house and things somehow doing stuff uh, based on some kind of events that are happening and uh, this can be done using digital twin uh, because of access to all data and then the logic that will execute and do some kind of decisions okay. but good question this like uh, Wire is a uh, border is thin, I would say. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, is the integration to the real world? For example, if we see on a map a truck and uh, see driver, and we can um, make a task for him uh, to drive to another location, uh, can we track to this uh, direction or it's only to a uh, digital world? Yes. I would say <coughs> it's a digital twin, but for example, right now we are also working on a similar digital twin for uh, uh, fleet monitoring and task management. But in this case, uh, it's, uh, it's only one vehicle, right? So we are communicating with one vehicle, but you don't know how many vehicles are nearby. And in case, for example, this truck has an issue, that they can help them or took the packages he has in the vehicle because they have enough time to fulfill the, uh, the task he has, this delivery task, right? So, okay, it's like a limited uh, connection between the real world, but again, creating some kind of model of the whole fleet of the tracks and the connections and keep <coughs> the 
real time and up to date can unlock like new features uh, on top of uh, from a simple example. Mm. Uh, does, does it answer your question? Or? Uh, yeah, a bit, but <laughs> okay. Uh, so how about again? Uh, maybe after the meeting, uh, I will ask. You. Okay. Okay. So mm, during our like journey to figure out whether digital twin X ray is. Uh, just buzzword or no. So actually somebody spent a good, good amount of money to figure out that maybe it's not a buzzword and it really can help uh, society uh, or countries to uh, build a better smart uh, future. Uh, so we found out uh, that there is a huge amount of uh, materials you can learn about uh, digital twin and connected digital twin in UK. So uh, UK government established uh, so-called uh, Center for Digital Build Britain, so group of people who were working uh, a couple of years on a task that uh, uh, their mission was that, uh, to explore and find out whether technology uh, can help improve citizens' uh, quality of life and well-being. Uh, they were talking to stakeholders and uh, from different domains and they figured out that, okay, the answer is uh, uh, connected digital uh, twin. Uh, first of all, they, they uh, form so-called uh, Gemini principle. Uh, you can like, Google it and uh, it's much more about this, not only this one sentence, that, um, but it's stating that all digital twins have a clear purpose, must, must be trustworthy and must uh, function effectively. They are focusing on the uh, built environment, uh, so no, not uh, on the manufacturing domain, agricultural domain and automotive uh, industry because it's like a different uh, topic. Based on this, they uh, created uh, three papers, Gemini papers, uh, and that uh, they describe uh, what are connected uh, digital twins, uh, why connected digital twins and how to enable an ecosystem of connected digital twins. So they like formulate and explain what was the result of their work. Then they have decided to create a national digital uh, twin, uh, and it's like ecosystem of connected digital twins uh, to get some kind of better outcomes from a uh, built environment. So they introduce this uh, term system of systems uh, where uh, they see that issue and why we cannot, why sometimes uh, things doesn't work because the organizations or entities are not sharing information. So information is somewhere in silo, and, uh, and it's happening too that uh, sometimes you would like to achieve something uh, regarding some public case, but yeah, it, it's, it's hard because uh, information is like stored somewhere and not, uh, not uh, visible to other uh, entities of, of uh, this process. Uh, okay, mm, very boring stuff uh, up to now, also for me it is to, uh, to do it. But then uh, finally they are working on the information management framework that uh, uh, contains a set of rules how to implement such a uh, hub that will share the information <coughs> for, for others. Uh, so maybe on your projects, uh, in case you will be in this space, uh, somebody will uh, sometimes will somebody ask you to actually expose data using uh, information management uh, framework. But uh, in case you would like to share information from a digital twin, so we can use uh, data sharing platforms. Uh, two examples are Trusted Twin and uh, IOTX. And uh, the idea is that uh, the information of shared, shared knowledge uh, lives in a federative platform, and then there are accounts or uh, stakeholders that publish the information and then they uh, can grant access to other party to, uh, to read this particular information. So the information is, uh, some of the information are uh, bundled uh, close uh, to this digital twin representation of real entity. Uh, it makes uh, more sense in case there are more participants in this process. So for example, for a vehicle, uh, we can have like vehicle tracking, uh, uh, system that uh, push the information regarding the telemetry and position and leasing company, insurance company, vehicle user, uh, vehicle inspection or even police can for example read uh, everything from uh, this uh, digital uh, twin. 
Uh, one benefit of this is also that um, sometimes you have information, uh, somebody requires this information from you and it reads this information. So you need to expose API and uh, you pay the cost uh, for all the reads others have for, uh, to get this information. Using such a platform, actually you publish information somewhere and they need to pay for access uh, for this information, so for uh, the consumption of those uh, resources that they are using. Regarding digital twin implementation, so actually there is no single tool you can use to implement a digital twin, uh, but uh, Azure and AWS uh, entered this let's say, buzzword uh, domain <coughs> and uh, created a couple of services to support uh, such implementation. As you can see, they are quite new. So just, uh, for example, in case of AWS, only last year they uh, announced and uh, made it public uh, AWS Twin Maker and only during the last reinvent session, session uh, they introduced knowledge graph uh, to, to their uh, service that allows you to model uh, relation between uh, entities. Uh, okay, regarding Azure. So if everybody is working on the digital twin, uh, also we have decided to work on a, or create a digital twin to learn more how to use tools, how to create model, and uh, what benefits we can get from uh, this uh, digital twin. So in Peking, Kosice, Slovakia, we have also new building uh, hundreds of sensors and uh, we leverage uh, this access to sensors somebody put together. So people like uh, Oscars, uh, hard work was done uh, for us. So we just used uh, API connection and the grab uh, all uh, data. Uh, we are using Azure Digital Twins as a service for uh, the implementation and the model creation. Uh, they are using uh, Digital Twin definition language uh, that you can use to create the model of this Digital Twin. And uh, yes, this model maybe it's, it's visible. Uh, it's a simple one, so we have just a building, a floor, a room and a connection between them, then uh, some uh, air conditioning zone and uh, what unit operates uh, this, uh, this zone. The data from the building is set uh, to digital twin uh, graph. Uh, you can see uh, this uh, graph representation as uh, uh, entities uh, connected to the relationship. And then on top of this, you can do some kind of visualization of, of uh, this. As I have mentioned, uh, uh, one benefit or use case for digital twin implementation is uh, data integration. Uh, so in our case, we have uh, like thousands of sensors available or readings from, uh, from data. There is a SCADA system as a middleware uh, we are querying data from. Then we have access to access control system, uh, so the access cards the people are using in the building. Uh, then uh, attendance systems, for example, to in the future make predictions and be aware that uh, what are the vacation plans and uh, as well as uh, building management systems or so information about maintenance uh, and uh, staff to actually again do better planning. Okay, so digital twin in the representation is just uh, this Azure digital twins implementation is just uh, current state. But uh, we have figured out that uh, actually even our building is new and uh, has uh, plenty of sensors, uh, we were missing the occupancy sensor, so there isn't such a sensor installed. But uh, using uh, machine learning and having uh, data for the past for two years, we trained one model uh, uh, as part of supervised uh, machine learning, uh, just using temperature, humidity and CO2 and uh, get the information whether somebody is in the room or uh, no. So the telemetry data uh, flows through, uh, from building through digital twin graph. Uh, then event is created to ask model and do inference uh, and figure out whether, uh, whether uh, the room is occupied and this information is sent back uh, to, to the room. So this is, I think, a nice example of, uh, of how missing information uh, and can be fulfilled by using uh, another uh, parameters from the environment. Question. How precise is the model? Uh, How much percentage did you get? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in general such, uh, such models are like uh, the, the precision is 98% but actually the our colleague uh, who 
uh, did uh, this uh, use just rough labeling. So we gave him uh, two years of data, but uh, those labels he needed to create somehow. So he used just that uh, most of the time from 8 to 16 uh, a.m. or 16 uh, or 4 p.m. there should be somebody in the building or in the room and use such uh, labels. So, the real precision in our case was a bit lower, but uh, because uh, this is just POC and not like uh, uh, something production ready. So. Okay, so we also like feel that uh, we need a 3D model because it uh, must be part of, of such uh, implementation. Uh, and it's better for people to understand what is the context of uh, the information. The building and the planning uh, of the building construction uh, wasn't done uh, using uh, building information modeling. So we are missing any 3D representation of the model as part of the construction process. Uh, there was one option actually to buy a 3D model that was used for marketing purposes, but it was quite expensive for us. So we have decided that, okay, the building is built, so let's scan it. So we, we asked our friend uh, to actually use drone, uh, uh, create uh, a couple of hundreds of uh, pictures of the building. Uh, then we used uh, reality capture uh, photogrammetric tool that can create 3D model from uh, 2D pictures uh, on the fly. Uh, yeah, some kind of tweaks and iterations uh, are needed, but it depends what is the quality of the input uh, data. Sorry, why you need to scan it if you have uh, original drawings? When the buildings are built, we have architecture, uh, just, you know, all drawings, why you can use it and somehow make more than it. Because, uh, as I explained, there were no drawings. So what I, was, drawings, okay. what I was able to get, and really like, it was a hard way to ask around the, the operator of the building that whether he has some 3D representation of the building, the answer was no. He gave me just floor plan and it was the maximum I was getting. Even the, the planners for the building were using just uh, 2D representation of uh, each floor, for example, to figure out or plan where all utility networks uh, should be. Uh, in case uh, building information modeling process would be used, so in this case, uh, 3D model is part of uh, such planning uh, uh, or blueprints, let's say, uh, and in that case, it would be much, much easier. Okay, so this reality capture is a uh, handy tool. Uh, it's uh, like this initial work, it's uh, free of charge, so you can uh, work on this, uh, create your 3D model, but uh, for export you need to buy a credit. In my case it was for like 3 euros, and uh, I exported this uh, 3D model. Then post-processing in, in Blender is uh, needed because uh, uh, you need to somehow create the segments of uh, this uh, model and then finally export the 3D model to GLTF uh, format, uh, the standard format to transmit uh, uh, 3D uh, data. Okay, so now a small demo. Okay, so as I said, the heart of the digital twin in this case is uh, really uh, the model and the digital twin's uh, graph. So here uh, I can run a query for all uh, twins that are part of this uh, graph. Here uh, I have built only uh, one node or let's say digital twin representation for a building, a couple of floors, and we focus on our floor where our office or room uh, is uh, located. For each uh, room, uh, we are taking just three parameters uh, right now, so CO2 level, humidity and temperature. This is updated every 15 minutes because this is the granularity of data we are getting from the uh, SCADA uh, system. And uh, this model then uh, can be connected to uh, like visual representation of, of the building, so you can... Uh, You can connect particular parts of the 3D uh, model uh, to information from this uh, graph. In this case, it's uh, 
our floor and uh, our room that uh, contains the information of what is the temperature, humidity and uh, CO2 level in uh, each uh, room. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, this part, for example, is south part of the building and it's uh, all the time a bit uh, warmer uh, there. Okay, any question so far? Are you planning to clear a building from the snow? <laughs> Sorry? Are you planning to clear a building from the snow? There is a snow. <laughs> on top of the building? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was done in, 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 uh, in a time where there is uh, snow uh, in, in our area. But, uh, uh, so Azure is better than AWS <coughs> for IoT? Oh, okay, so, so to answer these questions, and uh, it's not regarding IoT, because IoT, I think the full presentation today should be uh, should be uh, green grass, I think, or IoT core in AWS. So, like IoT parts of both uh, platforms are maybe equal, I don't know. So, uh, right now my presentation is more about uh, digital twin implementation, so on top of uh, IoT platform. And uh, in, in this case, uh, Azure Digital Twins uh, uh, has this uh, language that can describe any uh, model uh, you would like, or environment uh, you would like uh, to have. Comparing to AWS TwinMaker, and that uh, service is more like, intended for specific use cases. But uh, last uh, a couple of months ago, they introduced this knowledge graph, and actually, also in AWS, you are able to implement uh, something uh, similar or model uh, what you would like to have uh, there. Uh, actually, the, the next step for us is also to try AWS TwinMaker with a similar uh, setup, and I think we will see the, the same like, amount of features. Question? Uh, is it possible to um, ingest the data to the digital twin from uh, IoT services of Azure? Uh, oh, okay. So, yes, uh, digital twin, I haven't mentioned this, uh, this uh, Azure digital uh, twins uh, service has simple API uh, actually to push uh, data, uh, create the model, create the twins, and also push, uh, push uh, telemetry or property data to particular twins. And you can do this from various sources, so like uh, not only sensing or uh, uh, data from uh, IoT devices. Uh, is, uh, like By function, not, not directly on project from IoT service? Through API, you can implement the layer that will push the data from any source. Can I ask one more question? So you can integrate right now. So you have the data there in uh, Intuin, and uh, one of the criteria was to ability to integrate. So could you right now, for example, integrate it with uh, room availability in Calendar or sorry, other ways? Yes, um, exactly. So. Uh, right now, uh, okay, um, it's true story, so we are like getting through the permissions to get access to all data sources we can have. So right now, uh, we started with SCADA and with, uh, uh, with uh, information we can get from the sensors uh, in the building. And now, finally, I got access to actually process the access data and uh, usage of uh, the access cards by our uh, colleagues in the room. So there is uh, really some kind of layer of, of anonymization because you don't want to have like maybe private data because there are many things you can get from data and for example it was really easy to see that uh, there was card uh, for uh, maintenance or cleaning uh, person and right now I can from data uh, like uh, do a query and uh, find out uh, what rooms were cleaned and this particular day, day and what was the amount of time this person spent in this uh, particular room. And having this information, you know, you can somehow do some kind of conclusion. So, uh, yeah, we are trying to integrate more and more data sources uh, to uh, then use it for, for some future uh, purpose. Okay, so actually that's it for, for today. I have uh, maybe uh, one more uh, example or uh, some like a graph that is a uh, bit uh, bigger, so maybe I can share if I have uh, one more minute. Uh, so this uh, is uh, from a uh, demo, uh, Azure, created for Azure Digital Twins, and it describes uh, the stuff where uh, they are modeling supply chain. 
So there is a warehouse, a shipment, uh, uh, what else? Uh, factory and uh, all such uh, stuff uh, that are part of the supply chain. And based on this, uh, you can then create a query, for example, graph query. And I would like to see uh, what are the, for, for a particular uh, warehouse, what are the shipments uh, that are uh, like uh, heading to this uh, warehouse? What is the starting point of, uh, for this shipment? And then also to get information, where are the shipments that they already uh, left uh, uh, the warehouse? And uh, what is the, the like, final destination for them? Regarding those that are like, coming, you can check the estimated time of arrival, so really the data you are getting from the real world, but, and then maybe you can plan uh, and uh, maybe postpone of uh, delivery of uh, something because you are not prepared to, uh, for this shipment and uh, stuff. So really, real world and then uh, possibility to query and get insights or the context of information in this uh, real world through, through such a uh, graph. Okay, so that's it uh, regarding the presentation. More questions? Okay. Uh, this package already arrived. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, this is like snapshot of the data. I traveled back in the time, so this is one feature of the digital twin. So do you have any specific goals that you want to achieve with your digital twin of your home office, like cost optimizations or some efficiency or anything like that? Yes. Uh, one actually is that uh, um, two, years, two years ago somebody uh, set up the air condition <coughs> and the uh, like, uh, quality of the air in each room. It's not clear after two years whether it behaves and this uh, like setup is still correct. Mm -hmm. And we need to like read data and we find out the correct uh, setup through the data and then compare through all the rooms uh, whether like, this setup is still uh, correct and maybe create some kind of alert that okay, somebody needs to go there because there are like, people, they have uh, like headaches uh, time to time and maybe the uh, air is stiff, but uh, nobody knows why, right? So, and this could be the issue. And here, for example, uh, it's like also <coughs> the context information that uh, uh, one unit is used to uh, like, uh, replace air in not only one room, but more rooms together. And it's not clear what uh, rooms are connected uh, together f uh, belongs to one unit but using some kind of description of the, this environment through some relationship, you can get the information. So even if there is, there is a malfunction of something, so then you can see what will be affected from, from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a question about uh, the example about building with many rooms and sensors. Uh, what are the steps to link the physical uh, rooms with the sensors? <coughs> Or how difficult it is, as in, is the sensor immediately assigned to the room, automatically, or there are some hard steps? Okay, mm, again, good question. question because you can see that uh, what we are doing it's like, uh, like baby steps and something that is maybe not like production ready and really such a questions as this one uh, like are there uh, we have also the same questions how it should be done in the uh, space when there are like uh, a factory many machines sensors and stuff uh, for example through some kind of scan the solutions for this is actually some kind of translation of the uh, a map of the sensors using some kind of naming convention, convention or using for example stickers for the machine, some QR codes uh, then through some kind of uh, uh, scanning of this building you can, uh, you can attach this uh, QR code, the information from the QR code to a particular twin uh, entity. So then you can like build uh, on the right side the model and on the left side the information that describe uh, through some kind of label or a sticker, uh, what is the connection, and then connect them together. But uh, yeah, it's a big topic uh, regarding this. To do it in a way that it doesn't take years actually to connect everything together. 
Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you.